Then we had NXT, which opened up with a graphic for Animal. And then we had a women's battle royal for a title shot. This match sucked. This <laughs> match was actually worse than the Miro match. The announcers explain, we've got a lot of new faces here tonight. God, no. Because Regal wants to give more people an opportunity. So we had a bunch of people we've never seen, including people that the announcers didn't even know who they were. Um, just so green. So green. And it was like people who were not ready for television. I mean, they weren't even ready for arenas, some of these people. No. And they were all eliminated very quickly. And the few highlights, they did a couple of cool spots with Casey Catanzaro. The Casey Catanzaro stuff, yeah. She did all of the uh, the Kofi Kingston spots. And the story was Raquel and Rhea were eliminating everybody. And then finally, at the end, they both got eliminated at the same time. So, I got to give uh, uh, Gonzalez, she's really gotten herself into shape. I mean, from what she used to look like and now. I mean, she she's got a really... From from like just standing in the ring, being like six feet tall and and having that big back and everything like that, she looks like she could be like a star, you know. Which before I never, I just didn't, you know. When they won, you know, they had her at like doing the Stan Hansen gimmick, and it wasn't doing it. But I think that she's got something. And Rhea Ripley, why she's in NXT now, I have no earthly idea because she's got so much charisma, and. I thought for sure she was going to win this. And when she went out, it was just like, what the fuck? You know, it's like, uh, I guess I, I get the story, but it's just like, come on. It's like she's having the worst year. You know what I mean? She should she should have been. The I think I've ranted this about this 55 times. I don't I, I have no idea. She should have been the superstar of this brand before she went to the main roster, like another freaking Becky Lynch. And she's just another woman. You know, I mean, they they. They made her out to look good here, you know, in the sense that the whole I think match it's was pretty clear they're building her up to win the title again, but it does not look like it's going to be anytime soon. But why? I mean, she should be on the main roster by now already. So another title run? To me, that's just like wasting her time. Be careful what you wish for, Dave. Well, she should be on the main roster. She's ready. So the final three were Candace, Shotzi, and Dakota. Shotzi tosses Dakota, they both go over the top, they roll on the apron and then on the stairs, and then Candice gives her a monkey flip off the steps to the floor and wins. So it is Candice versus Io Shirai at the TakeOver show, which actually should be a pretty damn good match. They had a good, they had a really good match before, but, yes. um, you know, it's like, these title matches are just like, they have nobody ready for any of these title matches. I mean, it's so clear that there's like, you know, it's like the, it's a pay per view or the the takeover on the fourth. It's like a show where um, it's like no. I don't say there's no long term planning because there may very well be some, but they didn't they didn't do any of it. If you know what I mean, like there, there's nothing like there's no matches that like they've been building up for any length of time, and that's like you could tell they were going because there were certain things Candice LeRae had said in in interviews over the past couple of weeks about winning a title and everything. So. It, it it was planned, but it wasn't planned by, you know, Candace getting a whole bunch of wins in a row and getting momentum. It was just winning this battle royal. Damian Priest talks about his match with Gargano. They're going to be wrestling at the pay-per-view, and then he pretty much says that Austin Theory is going to have a bad night tonight, which is, in fact, what happened. We had this segment with Fandango and Regal. Don't even bother. I will just he was, he we'll was, explain he, when we get to it. Okay, he was, I could have watched this 50 <coughs> times. He was uh, dressed as Sherlock Holmes, and he was trying to explain uh, the whole situation and how they were going to choose, and there's no Tyler Breeze, um, how they were you know, trying to choose the next challenger. I'm going to guess, just judging from everything, that this was one of the things that was heavily changed. You don't say. Yes. I mean, even made, by these week-by-week week standards, this made no sense. No, no, no. He he explained this match where you would have these members of tag teams, and what was notable is just the other member of the teams weren't even there. So I'm sure in some cases it's significant, but they didn't have any of them there, so it's probably not in case, every case significant. But um, so it was... Uh, Fandango said we have that it was 10 good. minutes left. <laughs> We're okay. Roderick going Strong. over this one. Okay, it's Roderick Strong and Danny Birch against Fabian Eichner and Raul yes. Mendoza. So yes. the winning team, which is Roderick Strong and Dan Danny Birch, 
will then have a tag team match at some point. We don't know when. So it's Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish against Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. And the winner of that will likely face Tyler Breeze and Fandango at TakeOver. Although it may have to be after TakeOver, but yes. probably TakeOver. Yes. So we have Chump and Jake Atlas. And they gave Jake Atlas a ton here. But at the end, he got hit with the draping DDT. Ciampa did not cover him. Instead, he picked him up, cut a promo on him, hit the fairy tale ending, and got the pin. He he kind of he messed up his finish, and the announcers actually called it the um, modified modified fairy tale ending because it, it didn't look so great. Um, yeah, J- they gave Jake more, but it's still only a five minute match. Ridge Holland did a promo. He's already debuted, but I think he's debuting again. So yes, I think that's yes. the story. Yes, but and he also they made a point that he was undefeated for a year in the UK. So then, yes, we had Roderick Strong, Danny Birch versus Fabian Eichner and Raul Mendoza. And the announcers had absolutely no idea what Fandango's plan was. So uh, I, I thought I thought um, um, they figured it? it out at the end. But like when when these guys are coming out, they're trying to figure out, OK, so uh, these guys are facing each other. Anyway, they do the match and Mendoza at one point, I must make this clear. He hits Roddy on the outside, but they distract the referee because, as Tom Phillips once again noted, the illegal man hit the legal man. That would have been a DQ. That's two shows in a row now they've talked about this stupid rule. Okay, it is a stupid rule. It does exist, but okay, but you're allowed to save, okay? Yes. You are allowed so, to break up a pin. Okay, so on Monday, they fucked up their own rule because... The retribution guy that that broke up Lashley was breaking up, was making a save. Well, apparently he did it from the outside, and he wasn't breaking up a pin. I I have no idea. I was actually told that they screwed up their own rule because it's a breakup of a finish. So a submission is also a thing. So if you break up a pin or a submission, you're allowed to do it. But if you just hit the guy for no reason... You know, when it's not a pin or a submission, then it's a disqualification, which makes absolutely no sense, but that's the story. So, yes, uh, Birch pins Mendoza. It'll be Undisputed versus Lorcan and Birch at some point for a title shot. We have Theory versus Priest, and Theory actually had an incredible dropkick in this match. And they ended up outside. Priest booted him in the head, razor's edge on the apron, reckoning in the ring for the pin. It's a pretty good match. Damien yeah, Priest has been awesome of late. And then Gargano hits the ring and lays out Priest with a super kick. We have a video. Somebody is returning to NXT to take what is theirs at TakeOver. So it appears to be a former champion from the main roster is coming back. But we do not know who it is. Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas, you think? No, no, no. I'm just throwing out a name, a former champion on the main roster that's not doing anything. Bo Dallas. Could be. I mean, who else? Hope it's not Kevin Owens or Sami Zayn. I hope it is one of those two. I would I like a good match on this TakeOver show. Nothing against Bo Dallas. No. How about how about maybe it's, it's uh, who else? Adrian Neville. I don't, I don't think it's Adrian Neville. I know it's not him. All right. Um, Bo Dallas. Who else is a former champion? I have to look at my list. Of you look at your list. I'm Na- talking Na- about Ridge Na- Holland. Na- Nakamura, Samoa Joe. <laughs> Could be anybody. I think it's Bo Dallas. <laughs> Ridge Holland versus Antonio DeLuca. Ridge Holland just kills him. Any company on this planet with a semblance of a clue could make a superstar out of Ridge Holland. I thought I've, was, I've lost all faith in Vince. So I, 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 I thought he was like, he's really strong looking, but he looked very mechanical to me just like um like he, he, he moves real clunky which is funny because he's actually really a really a real athlete but he just looked like he looked like your stereotypical uh weightlifter that that doesn't know how to move in a wrestling ring i thought he looked pretty good and he threw the greatest overhead belly to belly he threw, he threw, guy he threw two great overhead throws but i mean his movement is is very um, not smooth at all. 
Here's Shirai cuts a promo about Candace, and then Johnny and Candace show up to yell at her. Damian Priest shows up. He flattens Gargano. We got a tag match next week. And finally, the Gauntlet Eliminator, which was a very good match. Kyle O'Reilly and Kushida start, and they just do jujitsu for a while. And then Bronson Reed comes in next, and he's destroying both guys. And the referee's checking on Kyle outside. Velveteen Dream shows up, gives Kushida the Dream Valley driver. Bronson splashes him, pins Kushida, he's out of here. Timothy Thatcher comes out next. They literally go to commercial and come back, and it's time for the last guy to come out. That's Cameron Grimes. And so Kyle, who'd been out for six full minutes, finally comes back to the ring. Everybody gets a big move. And finally, Bronson goes for the splash on Thatcher. Thatcher's supposed to move, but he doesn't quite move all the way. So Bronson kind of lands on him. But then Kyle does the bombs away, pins Bronson Reed. Kyle and Thatcher then trade some ankle locks. Grimes gets sent outside. O'Reilly cradles and pins Timothy Thatcher. Grimes immediately hits the cave-in on Kyle. Kyle gets his foot on the ropes. Grimes thinks he's won. The ref says, no, 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 his foot's on the ropes. So Grimes starts screaming, you are never as good as Adam Cole. Kyle fires up, runs wild. Grimes misses a second cave-in. Kyle immediately puts him in a heel hook. Grimes submits. It is Finn Balor versus Kyle O'Reilly. It's probably going to be a hell of a match. It should be a hell of a match. I, I thought the last three or four minutes of this match were great. Um, I thought I mean, the, the whole match was, so, was really good. The match was really good, but the the, the finish when when it came down to the last two, they were they were really strong. Yeah, and I think Finn Balor and Kyle O'Reilly are going to have a great match. So that's good. It is a poorly built takeover, but I think that the matches it's going to be a very good in the ring takeover. I think so too. I look at the match. I don't know about the tag team, but I, I, it's probably going to be. If I'm going to guess, it's undisputed gonna be, versus Lorkin and Birch. I'm pretty be, sure that's going to be a pretty damn good match. No, no, the match is going to be Tyler Breeze and Fandango against um, um, probably Roderick Strong and and um, Bobby Fish. So um, I think that will. I mean, that'll be a good match for sure. But you know, it, it'll end up being good. So yeah, the Io Shirai and Candice will be very good. Um, the the Priest match with with Gargano will probably be really good, and Finn Balor and Kyle will be great. Uh, and they'll probably what, have one more match with, with someone or other. So, um, which is probably going to be Santos Escobar and Isaiah. And that, that should be good too. Yeah, it should be a very good card.